there, family. This is Bishop Ezekiel Williams. Well, you've made it just in time as we're preparing to go into worship and the word. I pray that you are blessed by tonight's message. Now let's get to the service. No limits to you, Jesus. We give you a relentless praise on tonight. Come on and just lift your hands up to the Lord. And with everything that's within you, you may be tired, but find that little bit of strength that you have and give God a big shout of praise. God, we honor you. We say hallelujah to your name. You are a righteous God. You are a great and big God. You are a holy God. And we thank you. None can compare to your holy name. None can, hallelujah, compare to your righteous name. And therefore, we lift you up on today. We lift you, we lift you, oh God. We lift you, Holy Father. We lift you. And we give you adoration and the glory that is due your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, it is us again. We, your people, come, hallelujah, with our mouths and our hearts filled with praise. We enter this building with thanksgiving, hallelujah, and your courts with praise. God, we're asking that you would, hallelujah, have your way, Holy Ghost. Come in the room, hallelujah. Touch hearts, oh God, that need to be touched on tonight. Touch minds that need to be touched on tonight. Some of your people are weak in their bodies and need strength. God, only you can do it. Make ways out of no ways. Open our minds on tonight to receive your word. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, Jesus. Touch our bishop. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Touch his body, oh God. Let your power rest upon every word he says. And touch first lady. Hallelujah, Williams as well. We give you praise in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'll be coming from Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. And it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Hallelujah. May God bless the reading of his word. May you all receive Bishop Williams at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give him glory tonight. The Lord is worthy to be praised. He's worthy of the glory and the honor. And there is none like unto our God. We are grateful tonight to be here in the sanctuary and to be able to give glory, be able to give praise to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a hymn that I want to lift up tonight. Some of you may know it. Trust and obey. Amen. Song says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey everybody sing trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. All right, y'all got it? Let's go back and do that first verse again. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, while we do his good will, he abides with us still. We'll trust and obey. 
Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity you've given us to gather in your sanctuary, to worship you in the beauty of holiness, and to call upon your name, to hear your word delivered unto us. Pray, O oh God, that you would have your way in this place, that you would move by your spirit, that you would touch here, there, and everywhere. O oh God, that you would not allow one of us to leave this place the way that we've come into the building but when we leave that we would be better for being here better for your touch better for hearing your word hallelujah uh, the word of man is one thing but oh God your word hallelujah is everything that we need and so we're here oh God like 
empty vessels before a flowing fountain, saying, feed us and fill us, O God, until we want no more. And we love you tonight. We praise and honor your holy and matchless name. And we thank you for what you're doing right now in the midst of your people. We thank you and we glorify you. And we bind the enemy now in the name of Jesus. We cancel the works of darkness. We cancel the works of the enemy. We bind him now and we bind his hands. And we bind his power. We bind his intention in the name of Jesus. Oh God, and we thank you for victory. We thank you for victory. We thank you for victory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless your name forever. Bless your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. And it is so. Amen. And amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. It's good to see you. Amen. It's good to see you pressing your way back to the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're thanking God for uh, Sister Swinton, sister. Amen. Sister Mary Henry. And um, they had to do a procedure on her today. Didn't know which way it was going to go. And so the family had to prepare for whichever way it went. But I thank God that all is well. Up until this point, all is well. You ought to tell somebody God is keeping her. And whatever God decides is in the hands of the Lord. But until now, hitherto, the Lord has helped us. Ah, he's our Ebenezer. Hitherto, 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 the Lord, hallelujah, has helped us. And we give him praise. And we give him praise. Nobody could do it but God. Nobody could do it but God. Nobody could do it but God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grateful. Grateful. I'm some kind of grateful. I'm some kind of grateful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. The report, the report I got last night was that, well, even if it works out, all it'll be is this, that, or the other because things are in such a condition. So this is the most we could expect. And when I was praying today, I said, well, Lord, if all it can be is this, that, or the other, we want this, that, and the other. Give it to us. Give it to us. Give it to us. And so far, look like he's heard our prayer. And I want to thank him. <laughs> I want to thank him. Hallelujah. Pastor the battle went in my stead today. And she gave me a report. She reported back. She said, Bishop, look like everything is all right. I said, to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. We honor God for all of you, our father's children, and certainly to our leaders that are here tonight. We thank God for all the pastors, amen, and all the ministry leaders. Amen. I want to thank God for Mother Gatlin being in the house tonight. Amen. I got to find out what Mother's doing for Mother's Day. I don't know if she's going to be with her children. You know, she got children here, and she got children in other states. She got children, children. And I don't know. I know all her children want their mother on Mother's Day. But if I fool around and find out mother's not going out of town 
on Mother's Day. Guess who will be preaching on Mother's Day? But I, I'm going to talk to Mother first. I'm, I'm going to talk to Mother. <laughs> I'm going to talk to Mother first. Praise the Lord. Now, you see how I just did that? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I learned you something. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to the Word of God tonight. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Hallelujah. I hear you, Pastor Joy. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. And uh, we'll be reading from the NIV. You don't have to stand necessarily. It's just going to be this one verse. But if you choose to stand, that's fine as well. And it reads as follows. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? God is asking questions. And I said, here am I. Send me. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Why don't you just look at the person next to you or nearest you and just tell them you've been given power for a reason. Amen. That's what I want to talk about this evening. The fact that you have been, we have been given power for a reason. Now, let me ask you, because this really is going to be a very short lesson tonight. Do you believe what I just told you? Amen. Do you believe that you've been given power for a reason? Amen. I discovered that people have all types of power. Power comes in many different forms. And more times than not, they often don't truly know how to use the power that they have been given. Some people have power and never use it. You know, like, it's just like having a vehicle, uh, Brother Shields, uh, uh, um, uh, a vehicle with the sports button on it, sports mode. And all you ever do is uh, live your life between the parentheses and you just stay in the fence and you never press the sports button and open that baby up. Every now and then, you ought to find an interstate or country road or something and press the sports button and put the pedal to the metal and blow that engine out. You know, just get the smoke out of the muffler system and just, you know. You know, they said it'll go from zero to whatever in how many seconds, but you don't know what it'll do until you test it out. Sometimes we have power and we never use it. And then there are other folks who have power and they often abuse it. My God, everybody that come in contact with them know they got power because every time you turn around, they're trying to tell you that they're the ones that can tell you. Lord have mercy. But tonight I want to deal with the purpose of power, the purpose of power. The Bible says in the 8th chapter or, 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 or in the 6th chapter, excuse me, of Isaiah verse 1, it says in the year uh, that King Uzziah, Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Stop right there. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Can I tell you tonight that that statement when experienced in our lives has the power to change the entire trajectory of our lives. The year Uzziah died, after Uzziah died, Sister Kiki, I saw the law. Do you see this? Because if you see this, 
then we can wrap this up really quickly tonight. I don't have to talk a whole long time tonight if you, if you really see this. Isaiah saw the Lord when King Uzziah died. When the king died, that's when he saw him. Oh my goodness. Okay, Bishop, what, 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 are, what are you getting at here? What are, you, what are you getting at, sir? I'm trying to get you to see that we don't have any room. We have no room whatsoever, uh, Elder Lundy, for two kings. Mm -mm. We don't have room for two kings. We only have room for one king. You see, what you must understand about the text is at that time, Isaiah had lost all hope. Isaiah thought that all the good days of the nation had already been experienced and they were over with. You see, nationally, they had experienced foreign invasions and and that had left them with nothing but a trail of desolation. And this caused the people of the nation to be like uh, the victim of a savage mugging. My God, they were just destitute. And religiously, there had been, uh, they had been meticulous uh, concerning their devotion to God and, and making great sacrifices. They had been that Johnny on the spot and the people had made it their business to attend a temple worship like they should. Not just monthly, but they were doing it weekly. Hallelujah. I mean, they could be found praying prayers and fasting, my God, and whatever they felt was required or necessary. However, the even greater problem was that none of this seemed to be enough to get through to God and consequently, God wasn't doing anything to rectify their national plight. The, 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 the dilemma, the saga, the circumstances that they were experiences experiencing it was as though God was not responding to their prayers, their fasting, their worship, anything. They just felt left out there. And then on a social scale, their, the life of the city was degenerated. It was degenerated and it was dangerous and the leaders had become corrupt and they had become self-seeking. And the poor and the needy were uncared for. Nobody was looking out for them. Does that sound familiar to you? Sounds like today, doesn't it? But when King Uzziah died, Isaiah, all of this caused him to lose hope. He was no longer in touch with hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He felt like there was no opportunity for things to get better. But when King Uzziah died, Isaiah says, I saw the Lord. You see, the Lord showed him, or shall I say, revealed to him his majesty. And in essence, it caused him to see that God, God, the I am, is still on the throne. Hallelujah. It caused his eyes to come open and to realize all of this has been going on, but God is still on the throne. Please understand that in life sometimes, or shall I say many times, a death will be necessary in order for a dependency to correctly be appropriated. Hallelujah. You know how we talk about having our priorities in the wrong place and our priorities being out of order? Sometimes something has to happen to shake us up so that we can appropriate our priorities and get our ducks in a row. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes a death 
is necessary for the order, in order for that dependency to correctly be in the right place that it should be. Now, I don't know, I don't know, you probably don't want to hear this, but I'm still telling you the truth. Sometimes something has to die. Sometimes something has to die. And I don't care how you try to fix it, saints. God cannot be your king until all of the kings have been removed. <laughs> I didn't come to upset anybody's apple cart tonight, but he won't be your king. He can't be. He won't be. He will not be your king. He's not even interested in being your king until all of the kings have been removed. He says, I am the Lord, and thou shalt have, he, he said, thou shalt have no other God before me. Jesus. Please understand, God will reveal himself when the environment is conducive. When the environment is right, God will reveal himself uh, the conditions of your environment must be right. Mm, mm, mm. You don't hear me. I said the conditions of your environment must be right for God to reveal himself. It's not that he is not present. No, he's always here. He's here right now. He's, he was here before we got here. He, he, he's always here. He's omnipresent. He, he's everywhere. At all times, he's the only one that can do that. He's God. Yeah, but there has to be the right conditions. There has to be uh, the right conditions. How, how's your environment tonight? How's your environment? Because in the book of Acts chapter 2, we read about the Holy Spirit. And we read about when the Holy Spirit came and baptized the 120 believers on the day of Pentecost. And as you consider when it took place, you must acknowledge that it was almost two months from the event of Jesus' crucifixion. Amen? Almost two months, 50 days. Hallelujah. And for the disciples and those who had become followers of Jesus Christ, I would say that the memories of what took place on the cross was still very real. It was extremely vivid in their minds. It was still uh, uh, front and center of their memory, my God. And for them, everything was still very, very fresh. And it's at this point that they were waiting in great anticipation to receive the promise of the Father. And when the conditions were right, the Holy Ghost came and baptized them. The Bible says in, in, in Acts chapter uh, 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 2 verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Tell somebody the, the conditions were met. Amen. They, they, they were with one accord in one place. The conditions were met, and they and there appeared unto them cloven tongues, verse 3, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Thank you, Jesus. Tell somebody, when they met the conditions, the Holy Spirit came. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you something, faith world. When we enthrone God in our lives as supreme above all, above any and everything else, and when we have refused to allow our lives and our hearts to become calloused, calloused by life, but instead have kept the cross and what Christ did for us fresh in our lives, God will send his power. My God, when the conditions of our heart 
is right. God will send his power. See, somebody explained it to me like this. Somebody said, somebody explained it like this. They said, when we think about frost, you know frost it appears when it's cold outside. The crystallization or crystallized water that we see when water temperatures get down to 32 degrees in the form of frost has always existed in another dimension. But the mystery is that we can't see it until certain conditions are met. My God. When the weather conditions and the temperature is just right, when the humidity is the perfect or the, uh, or the perfect ratio, shall I say, you can bet your bottom dollar that frost is going to manifest. My God, you didn't go outside. It has not been raining. You didn't go outside and pour any water over your vehicle overnight, but let that temperature drop just right. And when you go outside in the morning, I don't care what it was doing the night before. In the morning, you will have a, a sheet of frost all across your hood and across your windshield. Why is this? It's because the conditions were met. Isaiah says, when you, King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. But what did he see? What did he see? He saw the preeminence of God. When he saw the Lord, he saw the preeminence of God. He saw the holiness of God. I can say that another way. When I say he saw the holiness of God, I could, could have very well said he saw the nature of God. Because his holiness is his nature, my God. You, you can't separate God from his nature. You can't, you, you know, you can't make water wet. You can't make night dark. You can't make the sky blue. God is holy and that's all to it. That's all. He is what he is. And that's what he always will be. My God, Isaiah says, I saw him. I saw the Lord. I did see him. I did see him. Yes, I did. I saw the Lord and he was high and exalted. He was high and lifted up, the King James says, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Whoa. Hallelujah. When I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, with the train of his robe that completely filled the temple, then I no longer had any more questions. Then I knew for myself, the Lord, he is God. Then I knew God is still in control. I know the economy is bad. I know all hell is breaking loose. I know they're talking about putting Trump back in the White House, and we don't know what we're going to do. But I saw the Lord seated upon the throne, and the mere fact that he took his seat on the throne lets me know that he alone is God he's the king he's in control he's the one that's running everything my God and when God allowed Isaiah to, to see him it had an effect on him and it changed him it changed him forever because it also caused him to see himself it caused him to recognize his own unworthiness. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you can't keep telling me you're spending time with God. And you keep coming out with your same nasty attitude. No, 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 no. You keep coming out, you're still barking at people and snapping at people and, and chewing people up and spitting them out. Baby, you keep talking about you spending all this time with God and you're in his presence and you're studying his word and you're doing all this time in his circle of the throne. You's a liar. That's what you are. You might be with a God, but you're not with the God. My God, because when you're in his presence, that will be a change. It will change you forever. And if there is no change, then either you a lie or he is a lie. And I know he's not a lie. Something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. Something you haven't surrendered. Something you haven't given to God. Something you haven't released. Something you haven't laid at his feet while you were in his presence. 
because there should be a change in you. When Eli, when I, I could call him, keep trying to call him Elijah, but when Isaiah saw the Lord, he it had an effect on him and it changed him forever because it caused him to see himself. Did I tell you he recognized his unworthiness? But I also want to tell you that it caused him to acknowledge his need for cleansing. Oh, you don't believe me, but I can prove it. He said it in verse 5. He said it. He says, woe to me. King James says, woe is me. But uh, the NIV says, woe to me, I cried. I am ruined. King James says, I am undone. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I have lived among a people of unclean lips. They ain't no better off than I am. And my eyes have seen the king. The Lord Almighty, we all in the same boat. We all, uh, we all are messed up. We all need an experience with God. Hallelujah. It says, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. My God, is there anybody in this room tonight or on the stream, my God, that can identify with Isaiah tonight? Is there anybody here this evening that can remember when the Lord revealed himself to you in such a way that you finally realized just how much of a wretch you were, just how destitute and undone you were, and how much you needed his love in your life more than anything? I know that's right. I'm almost finished. I got six minutes. I believe I'm going to make it. Isaiah said, he saw the Lord. And when he saw the Lord, it, it changed his trajectory. It, it, it changed, Mother Maria, his outlook. Ha! That's why you were messing with me last night. You were messing with me. It changed his outlook. It, it gave him what he needed to know that in spite of what things look like, God was still in control. Hey, tell somebody God is still in control. Yes, he is. Woo! And then verses 6 and 7 says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. And your sin atoned for, I told you it changed it. I told you it changed it. My God, the, my God, the seraphim took the coal from the altar, touched his lips, purged him of his sin, cleansed him through and through. Tell somebody he was changed forever. My God, my God, Isaiah heard the voice of God and he saw the heart of God and he saw his love for his people. And so often all we want, all we want is a mountaintop experience with the Lord. What we want the most is uninhibited, uninterruption, passionate time with God where we can just go get a thrill. That, oh, yeah, a lot of times that's what you see up here on the altar a lot of times. And I don't discourage people from coming to the altar because I'm telling you, you need to come up here and get whatever it is that you need from the Lord. Don't you be ashamed. Don't mind the folk that got something to say about you coming up here. Pay them, don't mind. They can't give you nothing, no way. Come up here and get what you need. But then we do have some habitual offenders who don't really try to utilize what they receive to be improved and get any better. They just come get that crack fix. They come up here to get stimulated and motivated. They come up here and get a touch and they like, oh, 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 thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel good. And they go back to their seat, but they continue their stuff. They don't try to forsake their ways and their mess. That's what I call a habitual offender. Oh, but baby, when you're coming up here to get what you need from God and you let what you receive change your life, and when you let the coals from the altar touch your lips and purge you of your sin. Good God, good God, good God. 
Thank you, Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. You need a change to take place on the inside of you. Oh, God Almighty. I ain't got but two minutes. I don't know if I can do that with organ, man. Oh, God. Hallelujah. You need a change. You need a change. That's what you need. Hallelujah. Uh, so, so, so we want that ex mountaintop experience from the Lord, and we want that uninhibited, uninterrupted, passionate uh, uh, time with God. And there's nothing wrong with that. But can I just submit to you tonight that after the experience and after the encounter, <laughs> there should also be an after effect. Girl, if there ain't no afterglow, he won't hit no nothing. My God, there have to be an after effect. Oh, y'all, come back to church. Come back. There has to be an after effect, somebody. That is caused as a result. of that experience I'm telling you the truth tonight y'all listen to it later on so y'all know what I said because I don't know where y'all at yeah 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 that should be some residual <laughs> yeah there should be some residual that lingers as a result of that experience. When, 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 when you get the time, we got to go, it's 8 o'clock. When you get the time, you need to research it for yourself. And you'll find that most of the mountains in the Bible are named after the place of obedience. The place of loneliness, the place of sacrifice, the place of taking a stand for God. Y'all want a mountaintop experience? Really? Really? That's what you say you want? You, uh, 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 obedience, loneliness, sacrifice, standing for God. In, in, in the 22nd chapter of Genesis, we say Abraham and the sacrifice. In the 19th and, and the 34th chapter of Exodus, we see Moses being available for God's uses. In 1 Kings chapter 17, we see Elijah taking a stand for God. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 27, we see Jesus being the ultimate sacrifice for sin. And when we consider Abraham, Moses, Elijah, and even Jesus, I can tell you that all of those people were willing to make the sacrifice that they made and they were obedient to God. Great God Almighty. They were obedient to God. Tell somebody, God revealed himself to all of them. Yes, he did. He revealed himself to all of them through their obedience. All right, come on here, experiencing God. And because of the vision Isaiah saw, he was changed forever. Because of what he witnessed, he was willing to serve. Because of what he saw, he was willing to go. Because of what he beheld, he was willing to speak for God when it was an unpopular message to give. But that's not it. I'm going to give you this and I'm going to let you go. I want you to know that Pentecost changed the disciples. In Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2, we can witness the change for ourselves because in Acts chapter 1 verse 6, it poses a question here. It says, Lord... Are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Why is this verse so important? It's important because this verse proves that the crucifixion, neither the resurrection of Jesus, changed the disciples at all. It didn't change them at all. 
He was crucified. He suffered, bled, and died. Got up out of the grave on the third day, just like he said, and they were not changed one bit. Here they are asking the same old questions. Here they are only concerned about their positions. But in Acts chapter 2, Peter displays some passion about Jesus. Here we see him as he's showing his concern about the souls of men in Acts chapter 2. And I want to tell you something tonight. The Holy Spirit will do a work in you if you allow him to break your selfishness. I said he'll do a work in you if you allow him. You know when somebody trying to fix something on you and they keep and you, they're trying to fix something and you keep putting your hand up and you go put your hand down, put your hand down. I'm trying to, I'm trying to comb your hand, put your hand down. Put your, if you put your hand down and allow them to pick them, pop them look, you know them little BBs. If you let them comb your hair. Lord, let me, I better end tonight before I get in trouble. If, if you let them, if you let the Holy Ghost work on you, if you allow him to, he'll break your selfishness. The, the Holy Spirit will work on us if we allow him to change our priorities. I ain't got nobody. He wants to change our priorities. I'm finished, but now I'm, I need to defend why I named this message, You've Been Given Power for a Reason. The reason that God gave us the Holy Spirit, which is power, is so that we can accomplish his purpose. Oh, you thought it was so that you could go around being a demon gangbuster. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought it was so you could uh, brag and boast on how you can lay hands on people and, and one, one arm stretches as long as the other and, and the legs grow and, and people come back from the dead and all of that. No, he said you're going to be able to do those things, but the reason that he, God gave you the Holy Ghost, the reason that he gave you power is to accomplish his purpose. Acts 1 and 8 says, but ye will receive power when the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Then John chapter 16 verses 13 and 14 says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will not speak on, he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me, talking about God, by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. And you thought you got power so you could be a wonder. You are so confused. It's a wonder if he don't take his power back. Perpetrating a fraud. He ain't give you no power to make you a wonder. He didn't give you a power so you could get a great TV ministry. He didn't give you a power so you could get jets to fly all over the country talking about, well, I'm flying in, I'm going to be saving 100,000 people. Thank God if you are, but you can't save nobody. If he don't go with you and do the work, they're not going to be saved. Hello. He says, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. I'll say this, and we're out of here. Hallelujah. I know you're glad. The function and the duty of the Holy Ghost is to give glory to God. It's to give the God the glory. 
And the ministry of the Holy Ghost is to guide you into all truth. Hello. His function is to give God the glory. And his ministry is to guide you into all truth. Therefore, when we are filled with the Spirit of God, our main concern should be and is always the reputation of the name of the Lord. Amen. We want to uphold the reputation of the name of the Lord. We don't want call, to cause folk by our shabby life and our shabby walk, my God, to not believe in God and, 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 and to believe that there's nothing to our God. But we have to uphold the reputation and the name of the Lord. Amen. And you can do that when you are filled with the Spirit of God. Amen? Because he will work through you, and that is what people will see. But when you're not filled with his spirit, more of you is what they're going to see. And by the time they get through looking at you, they may not believe in him anymore. Because, see, we can be some strange people. I'm talking about me, you, everybody. We all have our days. Hello? Look, when God revealed himself to Isaiah in verse 5, he was humble. I'm done. I'm done. In verse 5, he was humble. In verses 6 and 7, he was cleansed. But then by the time you get down there to verse 9, God's plans are revealed to him. And Isaiah then is moved to action. He says, here am I. Send me. That's where we want to end up. That's where we want to end up. We want to end up in a place in our relationship with God where we finally have had that experience with God and, and the experience has changed us to the point that our whole direction has changed. First, we felt like it was no hope. We felt like it was no use. We felt like giving up and walking away. But when he got through working on us at the altar... Hallelujah. That's where it happened at the altar. When he got through working on us, he changed our trajectory. My God. And we came away renewed. And we came away saying, here am I, Lord. Send me. You've been given power tonight for a reason. And I want you to know it's time to go. It's time to go. God wants to send us. God wants to use us. God wants to work through us. But we've got to be willing to go. How many in here are in a place where you're saying, God, here am I. Send me. Hallelujah. If the Lord needs somebody, here am I. Oh, Lord, send me. Here am I, I'll go. Lord, I'll go. Hallelujah. I'll go. Lord, I'll go. It's the Lord. Me. Somebody here am I? Hallelujah! Oh Lord, send me. Last time and we on our way. I will go. Hallelujah! Lord, I'll go. Thank you. Jesus. I will go, Thank you. Lord, I'll go, if the Lord needs somebody, here am I, oh Lord, send me. 
And I'm here tonight saying, Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing to go. Wherever you need to send me, whatever it is that you need me to do, here are my hands, here are my feet. Use my mouth, use my mind, use my intellect. Oh, God, use my life. If you need somebody, here am I. Send me. I thank God that I've had an experience at the altar. And I thank God that he's cleansed me. Maybe I have not been touched with the coals of fire from the altar. But one day he cleansed me with his own blood. Hallelujah. And my life has never been the same. And I don't know about you, but every now and then I go back to the altar for another dip. And I say, wash me again. Purge me again. Clean me again. Have your way in me again, oh God. Hallelujah. Renew me. Restore me. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Here am I. Here am I. Do with me what you will. Do with me what you will. Do with me what you will. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In some kind of way, he renews me. He restores me. He lifts me. He empowers me. He infuses me. He gives me everything I need to accomplish his work. And I'm grateful. And I'm grateful. We've been given power for a reason to accomplish his purpose. God used me to accomplish your purpose. Even the more. Even the more. Even the more. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless your name. Oh, bless your name. And God, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, somebody, give him praise tonight for the word of God. Hallelujah. We give God honor. We give him praise and thanks. And we bless him even now. In Jesus' name, we count it done. Hallelujah. Thank God. Listen, we are praying for uh, Deacon uh, Marvin Wallace, who... I believe is scheduled for surgery. It may be tomorrow. I'm not sure. I believe it's tomorrow he's scheduled for surgery. We're praying that the Lord would be with him in the surgery and that he would uh, let all be well. Hallelujah. Amen. We know God is able to do it, and we're trusting him to do it. I told Sister Wallace that I was going to apologize to the congregation uh, on Sunday, and I still intend to do it. Um, and, and I called everybody's name for prayer that I had on my list. I didn't have my list up there with me, and I omitted him. I, you know I was on two crutches and standing on one foot, and it slipped my mind. But she called me on it, and I told her, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to just apologize to you in private. I'm going to apologize in public because I want everybody to know we love Deacon Wallace, and, and we're praying for him. And we had prayed for him in the back but we've omitted to do it out front. And so I think that's important because you may not think it's important, but it is important when you're the person that needs the prayer. Amen. You want to know that somebody is interceding for you. Amen. And so, yes, we are saying that we are so sorry. We are so sorry. But we asked her to please charge it to the head and not to the heart. Amen. Because you know we love the people of God. Amen. And so we're praying for him that the Lord would be with him on tomorrow. And bring him through the surgery safely. Amen. And that he would give him the appropriate things that he needs for a speedy recovery. In Jesus' mighty name. And I believe it's already done. What about you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, um, we are also praying for... Uh, Elder Kevin Gore uh, in the passing of his grandfather. 
I understand he passed away on this week, and so uh, I know that they were very, very close. I saw on a post that he put up, my kid is gone, and my kid is gone, and I know that feeling. God knows, uh, Lord knows, when you lose somebody, it is sometimes detrimental, but we're praying that the strength of the Lord would be with him and the family, all connected, uh, that they would be uplifted at this time. Because one thing we know about Dad is we know that he was saved, he knew the Lord, and had a relationship with his father. Amen. And so we know where he is. Amen. He's not somewhere out there floating, trying to find the gate to paradise. We know he's with the Lord. The body says, the Bible says, absent in the body, present with the Lord. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. Please hold these things near and dear to your heart. Amen. And we are planning, the Lord said the same, to see you on this Sunday looking for God to do some wonderful and miraculous things in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we give God praise for what he's going to do. I know that his presence is going to be here. I know that his power is going to be here. And uh, I know he's going to move in a great way. Amen. And y'all be in prayer for the, the ministry. Be in prayer for the saints. Be in prayer for me. I, I got a phone call this week, and, and, and somebody made a death threat on one of the saints. Amen. I don't know who it was, but they did. And uh, I said, my God. And when they got finished, I wasn't sure whether or not they had made one on me or not. It sounded like they had made one on me. But uh, I said, well, it is what it is. But let me tell you something. I serve a God who is able to keep you. Matter of fact, the Bible says, now, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and is able to present you faultless. Come on. He can do it. He can do it. The Bible says he upholds, he upholds you with the right hand of his righteousness. And I'm covered. Amen. And I believe that individual is covered. Amen. And I don't know if they did something wrong or not, but if they did something wrong, I'm asking the Lord to forgive them and, and, and cover them and give them another chance. And don't let it go down like that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm asking God to send his protecting angels. Hallelujah. And turn away wrath and destruction in Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. Amen. Folk just assume that they're going to do a lot of things, but they don't know that God holds the power to life and death. Hallelujah. God is in control. Amen. Amen. And so we give him praise. So all we got to do is do like I preached last week. The Lord brought it back to me when Jehoshaphat prayed that prayer and he says, Lord, we don't know how to fight in this battle. Didn't I tell you last week? He said, but our eyes are upon thee, O Lord. He says, we don't know what to do. You don't know what to do when you don't know who it is. You can't report a person when you don't know who they are. You, you, you can't tell on nobody who was in the bush hiding their hand. My God, throwing a rock, hiding their hand. But listen, I serve a God that I can go to and I can say, Lord, I don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And what did I tell you last week? I told you that we had to assume the position. We had to get in a position of worship and praise and give God the glory. And God confused the enemy and set up ambushments against them. And the next thing you know, he won the battle and they didn't have to fight. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. My God, I don't know who they are, but I know who I am. I belong to God. And he's the keeper of my soul. And he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you what I know. I'm just telling you what I know. I'm just telling you what I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you ain't going to live by this word, you might as well close the book and toss it in the fireplace. But I believe every word that he said and it 
it shall be just as he said and there shall be a performance somebody praise him I feel glory I said I feel glory I said I feel glory there shall be a performance my God God is still seated the same place he was seated when Isaiah saw him on the throne he's seated on the throne he's still king he's still God and he's still in control. Get your offering. It's time to go. Yeah, he is. I've come this far to start doubting it now. If God be for us, tell me who then can be against us. Is there anything too hard for God? Y'all better close that statement out. No! Nothing too hard for God. Nothing. He can move mountains. My God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Well, listen, we're on our way out. Please remember to be a blessing to the kingdom tonight. I'm excited about you. I can't wait till Sunday. Hallelujah. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I done got stirred up. He's a wonder. Yes, he is. He's a wonder in my soul. He's the great wonder. He's the only wonder. He's God. When Elijah was on the mountain, we got to go. Elijah was on the mountain, mother, and he had his armor bearer there, and his servant was there, and the servant got nervous because the king had sent the soldiers to surround the mountain, and they were coming up the mountain, getting ready to come up the mountain to deal with the lives of the prophet because they felt like he had been warning the enemies uh, 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 of their every move. And the boy was having a Guma Pow moment. He was, he was nervous. He was nervous. He was having an eat a bunker moment. Archie, Archie, what are we going to do, Archie? What are we going to do? He was worried to death. But let me tell you, the, the prophet said, Oh, God. Take the scales off of his eyes. And he told the boy, go look again. And when he looked again, he saw legions of angels surrounding their enemies. What's the moral of the story? You may not be able to see it, but you ought to tell somebody, my enemies are surrounded. He's the God of angel armies. Going home, being camped round about me, I shall not fear for the Lord. Hey, look, get your offering. We got to go. It's my Sunday. 
I just got happy thinking about how much God he is. I just got happy thinking about how big our God is. They said there was a red marker on my phone, but they got it wrong. There's a red marker on me. It's the blood of Jesus, and it's more than a marker. I'm covered by the blood. Oh, China. We are in the inner circle. Over the outside. We're in the inner circle of divine love and life. And all is well. The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. We're on our way out, but you ought to leap three times and tell somebody it's going to be all right. same we'll see y'all on Sunday and we come prepared to do more of the same amen I ain't got nothing but praises for Jesus hallelujah he's been too good he's been too merciful he's been too kind he's been too gracious hallelujah he always keeps his word he always keeps his promises amen 
therefore I have to praise him. I have to honor him. I have to bless his holy name because he deserves it. He deserves it. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you tonight. Amen. Thank you for watching the Faith World Ministries live stream. You can give donations to this ministry using Givelify, Zelle, or our website. For Givelify, just go to Givelify.com or download the Givelify app. Search for Faith World Ministries, click the Give button, and then follow the prompts. For Zelle, add Faith World Ministries as a recipient using our email address at info at fwmhr.org. For our website, visit fwmhr.org select the donate menu button enter your donation and scroll to the bottom to select your giving frequency you can also text the word give to 757-866-3737 and use the link to give your donation as always you can drop your offering through the mail slot or mail to the church at 6235 azalea garden road Norfolk, Virginia, 23518. Thank you for your contributions to Faith World Ministries, and may God continually bless and keep you. On this coming Friday at 12 noon, join us for an hour of prayer right here in the sanctuary. You're welcome to bring your prayer requests as we petition heaven together. On second and fourth Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, the Faith World Storehouse will be distributing food packages to those in need. If you know someone in need of food, tell them to stop by the gymnasium on second and fourth Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 12 noon to receive their blessing. See Elder Kevin and Sister Courtney Sanders for more information. On this Saturday, April the 13th at 5 p.m., we will host the Woman of the Year Banquet honoring the 2023 Woman of the Year, none other than Pastor Robin Battle. Come dressed to impress as we enjoy great food, great fellowship, and acknowledge the faithfulness of Pastor Battle to this church. The Faith World Praise Team is cooking up something good in the kitchen. Literally, something good. Come show your love and support to our Praise Team next week as they will serve chicken and fries after church. Continue to watch us online every Wednesday at 7.15 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. via Facebook and get notified when we go live. You can also watch us via YouTube from our website at www.fwmhr.org. Well, family, I pray that you are blessed by tonight's message. Be sure to stay connected with us as we dive deeper each week. Remember, Faith World Ministries is a world of compassion and reconciliation where we are changing the world one family at a time. And this is the year of accountability, assignment, and divine assistance.